Good morning, everyone. Corn beef. Good morning from a dry, another dry, and another, 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 another dry day. Here in Panay Island in the Philippines, yeah, the El Nino is in full effect, and we've not had any type of real rain since back at the end of September. Wow. And here we are, the middle of March now. Wow. Wells are going dry. There's wildfires. There's fires in the mountains. Um, we had lost the internet because a major PLDT cable over in Haro had got burned and there was a major outage and they got that fixed and we just heard that there was not a PLDT damage, but which that's our phone company here. Um, but we heard that there's another major fire that happened last night and happening right now over in Haro. Haro is a district outside of Iloilo. So Iloilo is comprised of many municipalities put together. And with those uh, forms the greater Iloilo city area. So Haro is a area, a municipality of the greater Iloilo area here. So it's um, not good, lots of fires, there's burn bans. I just see everybody breaking it. They said, you know, if you see somebody burning anything, take a picture of it, report it to your local barangay and all, but <laughs> uh, I can count sometimes as many as 10 fires going by locals in one single eye shot every day. In fact, just yesterday, I pulled my motorcycle around back here on the grass because I want to clean all this dust in the air off my bike. It was just a layer of dust on it because it's so dry and so windy. I said, well, if I wash off the bike a little bit, I'm going to conserve that water and let it go on the lawn. So I'll clean the bike on the bike lawn, not up here on the concrete. Concrete don't grow nothing. So uh, I went back there cleaned the bike all up and I let it sit there and dry and came back and there's this white ash all over it because somebody over here next door was I could see the smoke a big old fire and ash is coming down and that's dangerous because that means embers could come down you know and catch stuff on fire they don't give a they don't care but then when everybody's place is burned down they're like oh <laughs> Oh my goodness, man. Well, anyway, that's a story on that. Um, I had a friend come visit last night. He's a subscriber that I've built a friendship with, Edward, and his girlfriend, Jeannie Lynn. She's such a sweetheart, and he's such a great guy. Just always happy to see them. So they popped up and visited us for a while, and uh, that was pretty cool. Enjoyed that. And it's time for a new work week here. Yep, time for a new work week. I piddled with the boat some yesterday. You know, um, I'm still, my mind kind of got out of the boat for a little bit, but it's kind of going back into it again right now. Uh, I got thinking about that boat. I thought, well, you know what? If it, I, I could still be wrong, but I thought, you know what, if it did have a damaged piston or something and the compression was leaking through the piston, it would have to be going into the the block. It would be just working like an air pump and pumping the air into the block. And that means it would have a lot of uh, crankcase pressure and blow-by, but it has no blow-by at all. <clears throat> and being that it's progressively three cylinders that go downhill in compression and one cylinder's pretty much fine, close to fine, that it could be a tooth off on timing because in this forum that I'm on, um, some people talked about theirs jumping like on a cold day, cold start, and even flat out people not getting the timing belt back on right. Now, I haven't had the timing belt off, but 
the guy that I got that motor from had just sent it in to shop for service or something and it was not in the boat when they did it they may have possibly got it off so okay let's line up the timing belt let's line that old belt up and make sure that all the little tick marks line up right all the little marks line up well on that motor up on the timing gear um, cog or whatever you want to call it for the timing belt up on the head it has where you put a little bolt right through a hole right through the pulley right through that gear and it hits a hole in the head back there and so now that's in its position and then if that one's lined up right then you should be able to put a bolt right through the injection pump pulley the gear on it the cog and there's a hole in behind there and this bolt should go line up right in it so now you got a bolt through this gear and you got a bolt through this gear through a little hole they're alignment holes now if those are right then you should also see down on your crankshaft pulley there's an alignment mark right there and there's a little indicator that sticks out right over the top of the 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 balancer the pulley on the front of the crankshaft one problem I'd stop and sneeze. Remember what I was just saying about somebody burning? Somebody's burning something right now in the smoke. <clears throat> Whatever it is, is getting my sinuses. Their infatuation with fires here is amazing. So, anyway, then the one on the crankshaft should line up with this little indicator with a little groove. You know, like they're all engines in the world are. And there's the problem right there. That indicator is missing. It's not there the one that's down on that front cover it would be like your timing belt cover right down on the front the one that lines up on the front pulley harmonic bouncer down there it's not there it wasn't there when I got the motor so there's a good possibility that when they mess with that they didn't get it back on there or it's lost or they didn't have it to put the timing belt on and they guessed it and it could be off now this is an interference engine so if it's off too much it could bend the valves but it's only off a tooth I hear that it can affect compression and that it can affect power of course because it's not timed right so just to go get that cover it looks like it might be broke off or something and just to get that cover to line up that timing mark and all I mean it's nothing available here in this country. I'd have to have it imported from somewhere like Europe or um, from South America, from Australia, where those motors was really popular. They weren't so popular in the U.S. because U.S. they like to waste a lot of fuel and run wide open. So uh, they like those great big V8s, big old V8s, and burn a lot of gas. So. Uh, but, but this motor was popular throughout the rest of the world and I would have to reach out somewhere in the rest of the world and try to um, get a part so anyway that's my story on that um, I got in the boat yesterday I haven't cranked it in a while and I had all that loose check and compression and injectors loose and everything but I stuck it all back together and never started but you know what I hit the key yesterday and it cranked right up like if I had never even took nothing apart yeah that was pretty cool so I got two more of these logs laying right here those are about 16 foot long I really don't need them quite that long and um, I'm gonna be putting those in the ground today we got two of them put in let me show you over here and we're gonna continue working on that today also probably how I'm working on it first thing this morning because I'm wanting to get all that up off the ground and so we put this one up. Let me back away from it where you can see it better. We'll get backed up here. Don't trip over nothing. So this is a, a low area right through here. We're going to be doing a little backfilling in. And you can see because the yard's up so much higher there. You may not be able to tell it on camera, but there's about a five-foot difference between the ground level there and the ground level there. I know a lot of you don't realize that until you come here and you see and you go, oh, you know the house 
is sitting about about mm, I think we measured before uh, the median tide line out there we're sitting like 14 foot above the median tide line and it's roughly about 11 12 foot above the high tide line um, and they give you a little idea on that so uh, it's going to be a little backfilling going on. We're not going to backfill this all the way up level with the lawn, though. There's no no need for that. Um, that's a little concrete retainer that we put in right off the bat going across right there where the, the columns are. That was put in a long time before the vlog was ever uh, shown to you guys. So, um, before it ever started. So, anyway, that's the deal. Mel's going to have a little cantina like little sorry sorry store uh not a sorry sorry store like you just go in the neighborhood and all but you know kind of give me an idea a little cantina a little coffee bar breakfast bar hang out right there and it'll be central between our rooms there that cabin there's gonna be two more cabins guess that might be out here and all it's gonna be central area right there and out here to where they can sit around the sides of it and maybe some little paving stones out here and a little screen like that black screen there out over some of the area and uh, be able to sit and enjoy and all. So that's what's happening here with that. Um, got these concreted in and now we're going to take and treat that one more time. It's been treated already. It's been um, the wood has and the concrete right there is actually treated also that has termite poison in the concrete when we mixed it so that would also deter them out of there and um, now what we're going to do is we're going to wrap a form around this and uh, pour concrete up just above grade level and once again it's a deterrent on the termites and we shouldn't have much of a problem with them another reason we may not have much of a problem with them is termites don't like salt and even this sand here is salty it is very salty and we do not have a termite issue out here in this zone they just don't like it so we got that one in got this one in and now i'll need to measure over here and uh Find where the next one's going to go and get it dropped in and do a little cleaning up here. We're actually going to transfer these trees. Um, this is a citrus tree right here and there's a couple different fruit trees which are kind of struggling. They make it, they make it, they don't, they don't. But we're going to try to get those transferred off over here. And that's where things are at this morning for that. So they'll be doing some digging, some concrete pouring and all first thing this morning. What else is happening is, um, let me go show you upstairs. So there's another project taking place upstairs up here and I'll show you that in just a second but I want to tell you something. I've had viewers that seem kind of like shocked or it's been um, an afterthought decision or something to have this place like a little boutique resort, a little mini resort. Just sit down here. And it was never an afterthought. Um, it never was. I just Some people just get it and some people don't get it. So, if it was an afterthought, how come the very first bottom floor, ground level, did we build three hotel style rooms before the whole rest of the house even went up? I mean, we had to start at the ground floor and build our way up, right? So if we built three 
hotel style rooms. Those weren't an afterthought. No, that was pre-planned, pre-planning. Over what we're doing over by those ponds right now and converting that to a pool, um, there was columns back when we worked over there long ago. We poured these columns in that's been sticking up right there uh, for a long while now. Why were those columns put there? Well, because we was going ahead and laying out where the next project was going to go up in the future. And while we were over there doing work, we went ahead and put those in because it was pre-planned. So let me show you what else is happening. Well, you see this opening right here? And there's a series of them down this side here. Yeah, this big opening right here. That, that opening's like eight foot long, and it's about five foot tall, eight by five. And uh, here's what I'm doing to them now. I'm having them glassed in. They did these the other day, but I was so busy that I didn't get to show it. But this is why I made these so symmetrical. Uh, because I had planned all alone to put glass in here. Nothing's an afterthought. Everything's a pre-plan. That's why I had a closed in up here at the top, nice and symmetrical and all. It's all pre-planned. And, of course, I have a neighbor right back down over here. I don't want people uh, leaning over or drop something, hit my neighbor, whack them, you know. Uh, I want them to have their privacy. I don't want people leaning their head out. What are they doing down there? You know? <laughs> so uh, I had this. This is that blue glass. It's that blue mirror glass. And I had these solid screens put on. You can't open these screens. There's no need to open it. And it has that backer on it, that expanded aluminum backer which makes it strong, and this is a heavy grade screen too. Very nice, very nice. You can just feel how durable that is made. And then I got where I can slide these one end or the other and let some air blow through. And this is that mirrored glass and the afternoon, the evening sun comes across that direction right there, and it can be brutal up here. And I can already tell a difference as soon as they install these first two here on Saturday afternoon. I could already tell a difference up here in the temperature. You would think that breeze is nice, but man, that, that sun coming straight across through here when it gets in the sky from right there in the afternoon, let's say about 1 32 o'clock and when it's beaming through here for all the rest of the evening it gets hot up here on this side these right here have already been a instant game changer instant game changer so they're coming this morning and they're going to be installing this last one right here and then drum roll please then they're going to glass in all the way around up here all the way around they're going to glass in this fourth floor same thing with the blue mirror glass and the difference is up here it's going to actually have uh, sliding screens where I can open them all the way up not the fixed screens like down there and there will be a lot of sliding windows here so like this set going across this whole room right here it'll be where I can open many of them up Still get a nice breeze, but this area up here, this room up here, has just been useless. Useless because it's either you can't maintain the temperature because it gets really hot with the sun. You get the morning sun pouring in over here. You get the afternoon sun pouring in across over here. Or you get the blowing rains coming in hard when it's monsoon that direction. Or the other times of year, if normally we would have had rain, it being coming from this direction. So uh, everything would be wet. And I want to utilize this space. I spent a lot of money to build this up here, and I want to utilize it. So uh, we're going to be glassing it all in, and I am so excited for that. 
Uh, Charlie brought me the rest of the aluminum tracks that I needed for installing the last bit of my solar panels here. They've been leaning up right here and we weren't able to finish out right down through there with them and right here. So I'll actually be able to get those up too. And talking about dry again, man, we just cleaned these solar panels the other day and look at this. They are just covered in dust and dirt again and birds keep flying up here above and eating some kind of seeds and pooping and getting it all over everything. Yeah, there's those little suckers right there, those little far heads. So I'm gonna have to try to make a deterrent for them up here too. But um, that's what's happening here. Then look at this, this from those birds too. Look at this. Yeah, all from those birds. So I'm gonna do something to deter those birds. And then we're gonna have angry birds. <laughs> yeah, so I'm really excited. They're gonna be working on this this week, glassing this in. And when they get it glassed in, and I put these remaining solar panels up. I'm gonna have a uh, split air installed up here. And I'll be able to air condition this and say like during the daytime, when I wanna air condition it, it's not costing us nothing in power. Um, just a couple of these panels will run an air conditioner all day long. These are 545s. Um, just two of those panels, They'll run that AC all day long and when it's hot and then all the concrete's already cooled off. And then when nighttime comes, you can actually just turn that unit off because up here you'll be able to open the windows and you catch all this open air and breeze and, uh, and the concrete's still kind of cool. Or you can just leave it closed up and probably get residual cooling off of the cold concrete. So it will not be costing me to run an AC up here, unless I run it all during the night time, which I really don't have a need to. So the power's for free for what we've already invested in. Just buy a split air unit and uh, enjoy the space. Hello everyone, good morning. So welcome back to my cooking video show. <laughs> Just kidding. So anyway, today I'm cooking just just simple local dish. It's mongo bean, papaya, and I add lemongrass on it. And uh, of course, malongai. Just a very basic and simple dish. Filipino style and this food is most of it is uh, for myself but sometimes James want to try also but he but he didn't eat a lot and of course I cook something for him as well it's not only I cook for myself so I cook uh, I prepare this uh, pork belly I was already been marinated for a week and then I put inside the freezer so it's already sa the seasoning was already um, soaked to that meat and uh, I was preparing the charcoal here Well, we'll do a little update of what's happening here at the place. I put mop mop to Mr. Mark, Mr. Mark, Marky Mark, and the Funky Bunch. Put him to start making a little extension on top of this beam here at this old fence. We need to get it up about to the height of that top wall that pond is. I'm gonna put it down about two inches lower so when we pour the decks, there'll be a back slope. I don't know if we'll do the whole two inches or not, but we can adjust that when we pour the deck. And uh, right now we need a little wall here to backfill with, so uh, if we don't need it quite two inch drop on there. We can always just adjust the, the thickness of the surface when we pour it, um, but never can tell. 
definitely want it draining back away from the pool though so um, he's gonna go ahead and form that up and leave still sticking out that we can bend over and tie a grid to when we get ready to pour the top ducks also and the guys are digging out over for the shallow end and they're transferring that soil for the backfill around this and uh, so you know it's a win-win we get a backfill for this at the same time we dig out shallow water and the top soil they get off of there that was backfilled that I had backfilled in here before we're taking it and uh, spreading it out for this little slope right here we've done it over here before and filled this out it's still pretty good drop right there and we're reusing it down through here so they're slowly getting this in dug out and we can get down in there and break all that wall open you know it's probably hard for you to get a perspective but i say from the top of that wall where he's standing it's maybe four and a half feet there right now That won't be the water depth just yet because the water line will be below in there. But this wall right here, it'll get knocked out. Nice walk out here to this cabin. Check this out. Miss Melinda, she's putting plants out out here. Trying to give it a little decor. I'll tell you what, these steps are so beautiful, you don't even want to walk on them, man. We keep, we're taking our slippers off out here. <laughs> we we'll even walk in on the steps they are just so pretty man look at that it's gorgeous Let's look at all of this man just absolutely gorgeous so in here he's getting the plywood over the wall kind of fish out of this back a little bit so we can get a better view over the room now i'm not going to leave it just naked plywood like this he does have a that penetrating sealer on both sides of this plywood and a top coat finish but i'm not going to leave it just raw plywood in here i wanted this as a backer once again it's about smells and noise and stuff with the cr right here i want it solid on both sides and then we'll come in and laminate something better looking than this over it so we got that in you know it's got the ceiling in here i'll remove the fish out of there hung my light bulb in here for the moment to see the work and uh that's coming right along he started putting in some plywood over here on this side uh working on that he put a drain pipe in down here and then this floor here is just beautiful too we've got more coats still to put on this floor though it's just the beginning and so what i have him doing up here is i asked him to leave those little ceiling joists counter levered out right there and then i had him take his plywood just then and make this little overhang right over the top where the bed would be and i've got some little led lights that are more like a little direct beam that goes down and i'm gonna put them there over where the bed is and you can use them like a reading light or something there in the bed <laughs> 